I'm Connor Reed with words to that effect. Elaine. Axfim. Valeria. Barovia. Birkenfield. Bomania. Davinina. Imaginary countries. Bovinia. Cardonia. Dawsbergen. Easy to invent. Fredonia. Genovia. The best names sound very plausible. Montalbanco. Graustark. Karaslavia sounds real. Rutania. Sylvania. That's a place, isn't it? Marzovia. Kaina. Karaslavia. Or maybe it was before the breakup of the Soviet Union. Karlsberg. Carpathia. Grand Fenwick. Northland. Novia. Or the Austro Hungarian Empire. Thermosa. No, wait. Ruritania. 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 <laughs> Ruritania. I've definitely heard of Ruritania. You may well have too. Not because it is or was a real country, it's not, but because Ruritania is the imaginary country. It's not the first one by any means. Writers and storytellers have been inventing places for, well, as long as there have been stories. Fairy tale kingdoms, utopian islands, lost worlds. But Ruritania is different. It's the setting for a novel first published in 1894 called The Prisoner of Zenda. It was an immediate bestseller, and it became a template for imaginary country narratives. It spawned countless knockoffs and imitations, parodies, and reworkings. The fictional country gave its name to a whole genre of literature. The Ruritanian romance was born. You know the way after the Da Vinci Code came out, there was a period where you couldn't move in a bookshop without falling over another thriller involving secret codes? Well, it was a bit like that in the 1890s, except with imaginary countries. Suddenly, everyone was setting their novel in a Laurania or a Graustark. And we haven't really stopped from Kumar to Zubrovka. You've been listening to the latest episode of Words to That Effect. Thanks for listening, and I hope you want to hear the rest. You can get this episode on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you normally get your podcasts. Or you can go to the Words to That Effect website, which is wttepodcast.com. Thanks very much.